Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to set arbitrary cutoff values in addition to our z-score driven ones. But before we do that, there are some metrics where we need to flip some things around because some metrics, a good cutoff value is actually a lower standard deviation or a lower score. So what we're going to do first is we're going to identify those metrics. And for me, all the sprinting metrics are that way. I don't know why that's highlighted. And what we're going to simply do to change that is we can copy these formula up here, the ones where the good cutoff value is present, and we'll paste them down here. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll copy these and paste them down here. Now we just have one set of values on top of the other. And I'm going to copy them both and paste them right here. And then remove that. Now what we've done is we've just inverted the numbers. Another way to do that, if you're interested, this is probably an easier way, is to select all three cells that you have for the good cutoff, move them, drag them by clicking on oops, this, these crosshairs, drag them beneath the lower ones, and then grab the whole box and drag it up. I'm just going to do that for each of these sets of metrics where I just drag them around. The formulae don't change, but all we're doing is we're just switching the good cutoff and the bad cutoff values. So I'm going to do that too with speed or the on ice times. And what else? Well, this is another time one, at least for me, the two lap average time. So let's do the same thing. And let's do the same thing for body fat. And for you, the metrics might be different, but it's just, it's not even that important depending on how you do your formulas later. But I like consistency and I named it good cutoff, so I want the good cutoffs to be appropriate in that row and the bad cutoffs, I want them to be appropriate in that row also. Now, for differences, I'm going to do the same thing. Not that we're probably not going to use this metric, but we're just going to do that. And if you want to do things all at once, there's actually a faster way to do this. So instead of going one by one, which I just wanted to expose you to, we can select everything for, especially if you have things together that are all lower is better. For example, all these differences, we want a lower asymmetry value, let's just say. We can select everything at once and put it beneath. And then I can select even more cells and drag it up. We've just inverted the values on all these things. Now, arbitrary cutoffs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up, and then I'm going to let you do it yourself. I'll set up a couple, but it's really based on, on what you feel is, is an appropriate cutoff value. I know some people have standards. So when I do this, I'm going to say arbitrary good, or arbitrary good cutoff, arbitrary bad cutoff. Let's make this a little bit bigger, and I'm going to specify this as STD good cutoff and STD bad cutoff. So j just to be clear about what's going on here, these are calculations, whereas these are going to be manually set by us. So an example for me, I don't really know what these cutoffs should be, but let's say that I want the lowest score. If you And what these cutoffs are is if you get below these scores, you're going to get the lowest score possible. And what a good cutoff is, if you get above that score, you're going to get the best score possible. So it doesn't matter. For example, if you have a guy that um, jumps 35 inches, and you have another guy that jumps 37 inches, but your cutoff is 34 inches for good, they're both going to get the same score with our system. That's what this is saying. And you could easily, if you wanted to, you can set these. And actually, why not do that? Why not do that right now? I'm going to set max good cutoff, and I guess it's min, or I'll just say max bad cutoff. And what we can do is we can pull the maximum values and the minimum values from our data set to, to diagnose this. But in case you have specific standards, we can just set them. So let's say I'm just going to go anything over 36 is good, and anything under, I don't know, 
20, you get a zero. That's what I'm saying. And for the U8, or if, and for the U20s, maybe it's 37 and it's 19 or 21 because we expect them to perform better on the counter movement jump best. And for everyone, uh, maybe I'll redo this. Let's make this 30 and let's make this 18. And then for everyone, maybe it's, if we are going to use everyone, let's make it 32 and uh, 19. So that's an example of setting arbitrary cutoffs for good and bad values. And when I come back to this video, or when you come back here, they're all going to be filled out. And I encourage you to just do that on your own. And then we'll do the, the max good and bad cutoffs. These are all just different ways to get cutoff values to indicate what your score should mean. You don't have to do them all. You might have a certain system that you, that you want to use with a certain cutoff value, and you can just do it that way. So I'll see you in a second. All right, and, and we're back. So you'll notice that I have arbitrary cutoff values filled in for, for the metrics, like I said I would. And hopefully you have your own. And now what we can get is we can get the max good cutoff values for, for all these things. Um, and that would be determined, essentially what we're saying is we want the best person to have the best score and the worst person to have the worst score, and then people fill in in between, depending on um, what our scores are. So the first thing um, that I'm going to do is, again, you can do find, you're going to have to find and replace it again. We should have done this at the very beginning, but the reason why I didn't is because, is because um, some computers or some types of Excel don't support the function that we're about to use. So I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to do it in two different ways, and then I'm kind of going to, I'll do a copy and, I'll do a copy and paste once, and then you can figure out the rest on your own. So we already calculated an average given a certain set of criteria. And we want that same criteria to exist with the maximum values. In other words, we want to get the maximum value of CMJ best if the value is greater than zero and the group is equal to this, that group for the U18 group. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. What's What happened is that D3 moved to D10 because I didn't lock in any cells, but if I change this back to D3, let's say, and click enter, I'm getting the same formula that I have before. And the only thing that I have to change, this is why I like average ifs, um, because it complies with some ifs, max ifs, and min ifs, assuming that your version is, is up to date. So if I type in max instead of average and click enter, this is giving me the maximum value in the data set for this group. So having a standard deviation, yeah, it looks like there's a lot of variance. And what we can do is I can either, I can do one of two things. The first is maybe I want to lock in this row so that when I copy and paste the formula down, it won't change. So I'll click that. I locked in row three. I'm going to copy this and paste it down for the bad cutoff value. And I'm going to change max ifs to min ifs. So what these numbers represent are the two or the uh, the highest and the lowest value in our data set for the U18 group. What I can then do is I can copy this and paste them here. And now again we have the maximum and minimum values for the U20 group. Ironically, they're the same for for both, at least for the maximum. And then what we can do is we can copy these again and paste them here. But we need to change some criteria because the group, there's no all group. What we do is we just remove the group criteria to get the max and the min of the entire cohort. And we should see them, they're essentially going to be the U18 group. I remove that criteria and I click enter and I'll do the same thing in the other one where I remove the second piece of criteria and I click enter. So now we have the minimum and the maximum values for the entire cohort. Now the second way that we're going to do this and I'm just going to do this twice so max good cutoff v2 max bad cutoff v2 
is I'm going to copy these formulae and paste them down um, to start with. And the way that we change this formula is this comes last, essentially. Um, and everything else, I mean, you know, you'll see how it works. So let's do the first one from scratch. Let's actually do the first one from scratch. Say equals max. But before we get a maximum number, there's criteria. We're going to say if, go into our table, table data, group is equal to this group. And let's lock this cell in because we're going to copy and paste the formula down and we can just change it to min. So that's one piece of criteria. So we want the maximum value if that's true. And also, comma, if, just to make it the same, TBL underscore data, the counter move or the CMJ best, the value, comma, is, or sorry, no comma, is greater than zero with no quotes. And then I'll do comma. So if both of these things are true, then we want table data cmj best and we're getting the maximum of that so i'm going to close a couple parentheses and click enter and when i do the value should be the same as this one that we did here and i'm going to wrap it in if error if there's an error with this comma let's make it blank and i don't know if you'll have to hold control uh hold down control shift enter or command shift enter for this to work but let's do it that way just in case, um, because there have been differences between um, PT, PC types. So I'm gonna hold down Control Shift and click Enter. And when I do that, we'll see these squiggly brackets on either side. Now I can copy this formula and paste it down and change max to min and hold down Control Shift Enter when I enter in the formula. And notice they're both the same. Now what I can do is these two formulae, I can copy them both and paste them in both of these spots to start. But again, we're looking at a group that doesn't exist when we're looking at all, when we apply it to all. So what we need to do is we can remove this if statement, if group equals F3. So there's just one. So now we're getting the maximum value if the, the data or if the CMJ best is greater than zero. And we just need to remove one parenthesis to, because that closed off our first if statement. Hold down control shift and click enter. And now we get a value and the squiggly brackets are on either side. And I'm going to copy this and paste it down again and change max to min. And hold down control shift and click enter. So now we have two different cutoff value, or we, we have maximum and minimum cutoff values for this metric, and that's great. Now that we've done that, let's just adjust the formatting a little bit. I'm just going to select all these cells and decrease the number of decimals. doesn't really matter um, how many decimals there are, but what we can do now is we can do the same thing that we did before with the other values, where we copy them and paste them everywhere else. So I can copy this and paste them here. And the formulas will still work, but they're looking at the CMJ best. And maybe I just paste them all throughout. So I can paste, paste, paste. And now I'm going to do it the other way that I did before, where I click on the first cell. Not sure why. And of each one, hold down control and click on the first cell of each of these things. And one important thing to note is we're going to, have to do the same thing that we did with the speed metrics where we invert these values to be um, because the lower values are going to be good and the upper or the max values are going to be bad. Same thing with the asymmetries. I'm just holding down control, scrolling along and clicking on the first cell for every uh, in every set of columns. Click all of these, click all of these, click all of these. And that's it. I'm going to do Control V. And I'll get the same formula in every single set. I'm going to go back to the beginning now. And remember, we're looking at the CMJ best. So to get this done quickly, 
we can select all these cells, go to find, replace, CMJ best quote, or uh, parenthesis IN, and the parenthesis, and go CMJ average. Parenthesis I, I N. Click enter. Now, all of, all of our formulae have changed to get the max and minimum values for CMJ average. Then we'd go to the next one. And maybe this is the way that I did before where I copy the header, which is the same as my column name. That's very important in my table. So I'm going to replace with raw jump. Notice, I mean, that's the same for all cohorts. But that's fine. Um, I didn't do a good job at um, randomizing the data. Uh, so I'll copy all this. Come in here. Replace CMJ best with... I'm going to get relative peak power. And again, we're getting very similar values because of my poor job. Now let's do pull-ups. Now this should be a whole number, we would hope. Can't get um, an, a decimal of pull-ups. Change CMJ best. What it is in pull-ups. And again, it's the same in each cohort. I'm going to keep on going until I get different, different numbers. Um, so... TBDL1RM, let's change it, TBDL1RM, replace those, there you go, we got a couple of different numbers, but again, it's very similar because I did a bad job. So, you would do this for, the, for all of these, and I'm going to come back, and hopefully you have all this done, and then I will, either way, well, in any case, hopefully you have a maximum and a minimum cutoff. Um, based on the maximum and minimum, minimum values in the data set, if that's something that you want. And you may skip this entirely if that's not something that you want. If you want to use standard deviations or if you want to use arbitrary numbers, you may not care about this at all. And when I come back, all these are going to be changed, and then we'll go through uh, manipulating the minimum and maximum values or organizing them for the, for the metrics where lower is better. All right, so hopefully your values look like mine. And one thing that I'm going to make, I'll make it easier to see them by highlighting these cutoffs and making them gray, just so we can see them. And one thing I also like to do sometimes is, like, scrolling. I, I don't know which cutoffs are which, so if we click on column C here, or the pane before the pane that you want to freeze, you can go to View and go to Freeze Panes, and then when I scroll across this we'll always see these so I'm going to scroll across and you'll see that the metrics never leave now we need to identify the numbers where lower is better like we did before pretty much all these sprint sprint times are so we can do the same thing that we did before and we're gonna to have to do it twice just because I did it um, in a different way um, in each but you only have to do it once so if I select all of these we're gonna drag them move them beneath then we're going to drag them all above. And now we have, you know, we just inverted the cutoff values for a good cutoff being lower and a bad cutoff being higher. And we can see that here. So I, I'll do the same thing here. And what I'm probably going to do is I'll just delete. I'll, do, I'll delete one of these. I'll stay with the max if without the max ifs um, because I just don't want people to struggle as we go through it. Actually, I might as well just do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these two rows because I don't need them anymore. We already have those values here. So now I still need to change. I changed all the sprinting, but what we also need to do is we need to change the two lap times. So let's select them all, drag them beneath. Select them all, drag them up. Oh, I should have done body fats too, but let's select them all, drag them, select them all, drag them. And now when we get to the asymmetry stuff, we'll do the same thing. So I'm going to select all the asymmetry stuff. Drag them down. And then all the asymmetry stuff. I'll drag them up with the inverted values. All right. Now that's it for this video. Um, 
in the next one, we're going to actually start creating scores.